Hi, this is Ian Mitchell with Gnome Americas. And today we're going to take you through the web UI and show you some good provisioning best practices for the Gnome M500 series of phones. So first thing we'll do is just run through um, a couple screens on the web UI. So of course we have a standard um, status screen so you can kind of see your account statuses, whether they're registered, uh, firmware settings, MAC address, RPI. We can also see a cordless registration screen. This will show you what um, portable parts or duct phones you have registered, um, whether they're the M55 or the M58. So we can see the registration statuses, we can see the names that we've given them, the IPEIs and what the firmware version is. And this is also where you can add additional handsets if you have the IPEI um, either from the, the box or you can actually get it right from the screen itself um, once you've unboxed um, the phone itself. Now the big one is when you get into um, the configuration. So uh, one thing that we would definitely recommend is especially if you're gonna be um, utilizing uh, the shared call or the Kaylee is you probably want to have um, one account for your Kaylee operation, but you still want to give um, standard accounts to all of your individual extensions. This way, everybody gets their own uh, extension number, their own DID potentially, their own voicemail, um, and they can still get the benefit of having the shared um, call experience, especially for like the main business, right? So the main business would typically have one primary number where customers would call into, and then the individual um, phones themselves can have their own extension so they can still have their own um, specific voicemail, you know, whether it's like a pharmacy or a small doctor's office, auto body shop, um, you know, pizza place, something like that. So the main thing that we need to do is make sure that um, when you create the SIP account, uh, you just have the type selection here. So if it's the keyline emulation type, um, that is what allows you to um, program a keyline button type, and it knows to automatically index um, the calls depending on how many um, buttons have been programmed on the devices, and it will synchronize them all together. So besides that, it'll look like a standard um, SIP registration. Uh, the main other thing that you want to keep an eye out for is under features. You probably want to make sure that your maximum number of calls is set to an appropriate number. Um, so instead of, you know, if it might be set to two by default, you might want to make sure that you're on four or five or six, depending on how many um, calls you want to be able to index across um, the phones themselves. And then if you just have a regular um, standard private account, of course, that's where you would basically just have your account type set to standard. And then again, set the uh, rest of the SIP features make sure that your uh, maximum number of calls is wh whatever you want. And again, we have a set to um, two right now as an example, but even as a standard um, standard SIP account or private SIP account, you can have it be, you know, four or five or whatever's appropriate for you guys as customers. And then once we get into the programmable keys, this is where um, the flexibility of the system really starts to show itself. So you'll have a drop down that'll basically um, provide all of the devices that you've registered. So if you register, you know, six or 10 or, you know, 10, uh, 12 or all the way up to the maximum of 16, if you do have a um, two-base deployment, um, you'll just have the list um, here. And as we can see, we've we've named ours um, differently. So we actually given them um, specific names instead of just handset. So you of course do that through the handset name. And we notice on the phones, as we can see here on the phone itself, that name will show up um, in the display, whether it's a desk phone or the handset as well. Um, you'll, you'll get it basically right at the top. Just a, a closer view we can kind of see here on this manager phone that we do have that, that manager for. This is also where we specify um, the default account. So we can see right now um, with desk set one, we have a default account of two. Um, and just to kind of show you what that might look like if we change it, right? Let's if we go to this manager four, we see that the current default account is five. Well, let's say we go ahead and change this and actually make the default account the actual auto body shop itself. So we'll just change this to account one and maybe we'll even change the name. So maybe this isn't gonna be uh, manager, but maybe this is uh, sales. And if we hit the save button here, what we notice is on the phone when you're doing an update, you'll see this little icon here. This is uh, basically just letting you know that the phone is currently um, getting new programming information. And then shortly, we should see the name change along with the uh, default account information. So if we just look at the 1034, look at the manager four, that should update shortly. 
Okay, so we see the update has finished. So our icon has gone away and we are now sales and our default account is now the auto shop. And this applies both for the uh, M55 and the M58. One other thing we can do um, as we look at the programmable keys is we see that um, we wanna select our type first and then we just have a long list here. So Keyland, of course, is the shared call that we've um, talked about. And what we notice is when you specify the key line and then you specify the account, the value gets grayed out, but it does automatically set the index. So because we have one, two, three, and four keys set to key line, we see that the index has uh, been changed to uh, one, two, three, and four. And this applies for any device that we have set this way. So even if we look at um, a handset here, we see that we have the four uh, key lines and they're of course using account one because we know that's the one that's actually specified as a key line. And we see that it'll only show you, once you specify the type, it'll only show you the account that's available for it. And then it auto indexes as the first one being one, two, three, and four. So going back to this one, um, this is also where you can specify the standard accounts. So of course, if you're picking a line type of just line, this is where you'll only see the list um, notice that their account one is missing. We only get a list of um, any accounts that have been set as standard instead of keyline emulation. And we can notice that we do have access to all the accounts here. So um, instead of having like some uh, deck systems have kind of a matrix where you see like the handset numbers and then like the account numbers in kind of a matrix pattern, and you can kind of multi-select uh, which handsets get access to which accounts. The same same kind of thing. As long as you have the button programmed, um, that's what gives it access to. So we'll, we'll notice like um, for this particular phone, we, we've got basically a line for account five, but if we look at page two, uh, we also have lines for account six. And we also notice that there's other phones that have that same thing. So I believe if we look at parts, parts default account is actually account six, but they also have a line that's just for account three that's actually um, specified on one of the buttons. So if we also look at the front desk here, we can see that this one also has um, buttons programmed for line account six, in addition to its own separate private line of line and account two. So going back to the sales here, another good feature to have are these um, deck to busy monitors. So uh, while we don't support like um, actual traditional SIP BLFs, which would um, actually utilize a SIP notify packet. Um, being a, a DEX system like this, it's a little bit more difficult to do, but what we can have is actually the monitoring of the, the actual phone itself. And this is actually a little bit better because of course, that phone may be doing other operations. It might be handling a page, it might be doing an intercom call, it might be um, handling a shared call experience. So if you were to use traditional SIP BLFs, you'd have to have a BLF for like every account and you may not know which phone was actually um, on that particular call. So by doing the deck to busy monitoring, it doesn't matter what the actual phone is doing, you're monitoring the phone. So if the phone is in any action, it will actually um, show that that device is busy. And this is basically simply, you specify the type and then the value is the handset number. So you'll notice that if I look in here, I've actually named all my phones and I've kept the actual device number in it. So you got front desk one, parts two. So I am actually monitoring on this particular phone, uh, sales four, I'm monitoring uh, the front desk, I'm monitoring parts. And then if we change to page two, I'm also doing a monitor on the shop, which is the third handset. So this is how you would specify those. So those are uh, really good things that I would definitely um, think that you'd wanna put onto your phones during that configuration is you probably wanna have Kaylee, if you wanna do shared calls, if you don't wanna do shared calls, don't worry about it. But you definitely wanna have your private lines, um, programmed into the phone, and you probably want to put in a couple of um, decked busy monitorings if you want to um, monitor those other phones. Uh, that way you know if somebody might be busy or not. And just to see what it would look like in case somebody did have only private lines, let's go back to the sales. Let's go ahead and go back to page one here. And we'll just remove all the key lines and say, you know what? They only need lines. They don't even need any Kaylee, and we know that they are line five. So we'll just change all these. And let's take them back to be manager. 
let's even change that default account over to five. And we'll see that it'll do another update on the phone. And we're actually gonna change this guy over here and do a similar thing. So we're gonna remove all of his key lines and only specify standard SIP accounts. And he's gonna be account seven, just so we can see what that looks like. I think what we're actually gonna do is change and add a couple more decked busy monitors to this one as well, because he probably doesn't need six actual SIP accounts. So we'll say he's monitoring one, two, three, and four. Get that guy updated. And lastly, in addition to changing um, these private accounts, we're gonna go ahead and name these. So if we go back into SIP account management, let's go to this one here. So if we wanna name the um, SIP account label, so instead of just being the extension number, maybe we wanna actually put a name to it. So maybe we'll just change this to Jim, and then we'll have 1035. And this will update the line key as well for the phone that's actually using that extension. And then we can see what that looks like on the like on the line keys themselves. Okay, so we can see here that our phones have finished updating. So that account label we see is reflected here on the phone, both in the default account and then also for all of the PFK labels they've now changed to uh, Jim 1035 for the account label. And we notice that's the difference. When we see a Kaylee account, even though the account label for AutoShop is just AutoShop, because it is specifically a Keyline emulation account, that's where you get the automatic one, two, three, and four to indicate um, the essentially the, the call index um, for those calls. So on this one, we see what the Kaylee um, our shared calls look like on the PFKs as they're programmed in addition to a private account versus a phone where we don't have any of the KLEs, we just have um, the private account. And again, kind of like the KLEs, you can pick and choose whichever button you want to actually make the outbound call on. And of course, for this private account, we'll also index those calls. So as the first call comes in, it'll hit that first line. And then as the second call comes in, it'll um, populate the uh, second slot and the third slot, respectively.